welcome to my channel once again and uh, for those of you that are not part of the channel if you stumble upon this uh, if you like what you see please like and subscribe uh, check out our patreon uh, that will definitely also help if you like the work uh, that I do and here in the channel for those of you that don't know uh, I work a lot with miniature agnostic and setting agnostic games uh, and uh, I play a lot of uh, things like uh, stuff from Osprey games like Dragon Rampant. Uh, we play uh, Mayhem, which is a rule set that I just introduced not too long ago. Uh, all these games, these are my favorite games to play and especially the setting agnostic games. Um, these are not necessarily a setting agnostic. They already have a setting with them, but they are miniature agnostic. So we're going to look at, uh, I'm not going to do a rules review or anything like that. I'm, I reserve that for my MJ, uh, gaming spotlight, which is my official video for doing like rules review. And we're going to be reviewing broken legions, uh, very soon in that, uh, video. Okay. Uh, also, please advise those of you that are new to the channel that my patrons see all videos first. So our upload times have changed and I've had to do a lot of uh, scheduling uh, changes. Okay, so it may seem like I'm uploading less and I, I kind of am, but really I'm not because I'm, you know, uh, uploading for Patreon for my patrons. Okay, so there's bonus videos there and patron exclusive videos there as well okay so broken legions uh is a game set in the roman empire and it's a fantasy skirmish game uh look at that creature that is so freaking cool all uh, right kind of hideous looking and uh it's it m mixes uh fantasy with you know it's kind of alternate history basically and i thought this was really interesting so i picked up this book uh, there's a nice hydra and uh, gladiatorial matches, but instead of human versus human, it's like they throw in monsters. <laughs> and could you imagine in a, in a, in a gladiator's uh, arena and then a freaking Hydra that comes out like that? Yeah. So uh, basically, it's, it's very cool. It has very good art. Uh, we're going to talk about this in MJ Gaming Spotlight. So I have these two games. I'm reading the rules on this, studying the rules on this, and then we have Of Gods and Mortals. Now this I've already presented in an MJ Gaming Spotlight. You'll see it in the corner there uh, if you're, you're interested in this review. This is another very interesting game. Now this one, you your armies, uh, this is a mythological wargaming rule. So it's all based on historical mythology and... So you'll have your typical Greek gods and your Roman gods and your Egyptian gods, and they're mixed with humans. And so these gods lead their humans into battle. And I thought that was such an interesting setting. I decided then, you know, I want to play this game with Julie, both of these games with Julie. We're going to have solo war games and also games with Julie. And then I said, well, you know what? I want to play it in 172 scale. And that's what I did. I picked up my first Roman infantry box, 172 scale, by Italeri. And I was looking for Svezda. Uh, Svezda is my favorite company. But uh, Italeri is pretty good. So why don't we crack this open? This is going to be the purpose of this video, is to look at this uh, Roman infantry box and tie it in to what I want to do with these two rule sets. Okay, so let's crack that open. Okay, and I picked this box up for about 17 bucks um, in Amazon. Uh, and I went to Amazon because I have Prime and I can save a lot that way. Okay, uh, so not too bad. Now, usually they tell you how many figures you get right on the box. Uh, it doesn't look like this does. Uh, Spezda will have it right on the box there. Okay, um, I don't see it anywhere. So why don't we just crack it open and figure it out? But a nice box, nice artwork on the box. I love the artwork in the beginning there. It's really cool. And here we go. One thing I love about 172 is you get a lot of miniatures. 
Now, let's see. Let's see what we have. Okay, so we have our little pamphlet. Okay, it has a coupon or something there. Uh, no instructions. That's okay. These are, are pretty self-explanatory. Let's move the books from the background. So it comes in a sprue, which is like a book. And let's look at these. Okay, so right away, you see quite a few poses, all right? And I like that already. You see the guy here with the gladius. Very, very cool. We see the guy kneeling. I love that they have these positions. Uh, so I can, we're going to see how many of those we have. Let me see. One, two, three, four on this sprue. And that's it. So four guys kneeling. So I can have a little row of four kneeling and in a front, right, of the unit. Looks like this guy's going to be throwing a, a javelin. Uh, here are some more poses. Okay, and again, it looks like these are a repeat of all those poses. So we get, looks like here's the diversity for this sprue. We get one, two, three, four, five different poses. And there is a repeat of those poses. Uh, looks like four repeats of those poses. So that's 20 guys right there. Okay, so 20 guys in this first sprue. Here you have the nice tower shields that the Romans use. Very nice. Let me see if I can even focus a little more. There you go. Give you an idea of the detail. Good detail on the figures. Um, okay. Ni nice detail of the Lorica. So very cool. All right. So now moving on to the next sprue. Let's see. In this sprue, we have three variations. And then it looks like one, two, three, four, five. Oh no, three variations and then three columns of figures. I'll show you that in just a minute, what I'm talking about. There we go. Okay, so we have the three poses here. We have some archers. Great that they include some archers. And then we have, so we have here nine figures. That's already 29 figures. Okay, and three different poses. And here we have all the little uh, javelins. All right, and it looks like here, down here, you have your command. So you have two command, uh, two versions of the same uh, models here, like the same poses. So you have three different command poses and three down here. So that's six more figures. So that's not bad. You get over 30 figures with this little kit. So that's not bad. And that's what I really love about 172 scale. You get a lot of miniatures uh, with just one box. So here is your standard bearer. And it looks like you have a centurion there, the legion commander. So, all right, so there it is. So quite a few figures there to work on. And I'm gonna show how I base these figures. Okay, and uh, we'll, wor we'll work on one together just to base it. And then of course, these get put on my queue because I'll have a lot of painting. So I already have a video about this, but for 172 scale, these are what I use. These are these little uh, poker chips, and this is only for infantry. Uh, I use other things for the larger figures, uh, but this for 172 scale, I tell you, I, I love it. People have recommended a lot of different things, uh, but for me, this is what works the best. They, they come in packs of 500 or 600 and I bought it on Amazon for like five bucks with Prime, it really works. Uh, I don't know how much they are now, but uh, these things, you can cut these without cracking them, which is a wonderful thing because I can turn them into squares if I'm doing uh, miniature bases for like trays or I could leave them round, which is what I usually do to play with miniatures individually. So I absolutely love this kind of thing and it's worked wonderfully for my miniature because you get so many of these. Uh, so I can really base a lot of miniatures. All right, so let's, let's get one of these little guys out and I'll show what I do. And let me just say before we continue, um, this kit is absolutely clean. Uh, there's no flash here. A few mold lines which, uh, uh, they're not bad either, um, just mostly like around, let's see, the top here. Oh, very minute though. You could hardly see them. 
um, I, excellent uh, in terms of cleanliness. Some of these kits will have a lot of flash. You really have to work to, like here on the sword there, there's a little bit of a tiny little bit of a, on the tip there. You can see it, kind of see it there. Okay, so those little things have to be cleaned, but it's really nice uh, to have a nice clean kit where you don't have to work a lot on the flash. And flash is a little bit difficult in this kind of plastic. This is a softer plastic, okay, and uh, that helps so that the figures don't break because they have flexibility. So, uh, all right, so here is my little swordsman, and... Um, what I do is a little bit of filing. You do have to file a little bit at the base. Now, what I do here, before I put them on my base, and I'm gonna show what I do with the base. Uh, we have to take care of this little base here. I don't chop this off. I prefer to keep this on because it gives more stability to the figure. All right, so I put a little crazy glue on there and we wanna take our time with this process. So just use the toothpick to kind of spread it out and being careful not to get those legs uh, encrusted with the glue um, and then just dip it into my baking powder. And uh, I don't remember if it was baking powder or baking soda that he used, so my apologies to Uncle Adam, but this works very well. <laughs> seems to have the same reaction. Now, if I do get it on the legs, I just go back and, uh, luck, well, not you don't wanna get the glue on the legs, that's for sure. I don't have any glue on the legs because I use my toothpick and just kind of go back and blow on it a little bit and get some excess out. But to dry up a little bit, once we have that texture, then I place it on my base okay this saves a lot uh, so i don't have to like dip this whole thing into the baking soda once you know once it's done so all right so now this is textured and that dries very quickly and now for the base what i do i buy these dollar store sandpaper bits and i use a lot of sandpaper in my projects and have a lot of extra as well because I get these big packs at the dollar store and I have found that for texturing bases like this sandpaper is excellent and you can get it in many different um, you know uh, coarseness of grain this is like an intermediate course it's not very uh, there's one that's a little coarser okay and this is great for desert and I just give it a little dry brush with a lighter color and voila, I have a textured little base. And this is my method. This is very, very subjective. Different people have different ways of doing it. This is my way. This is the way I like to do it. And it really does save me a lot of time. And I prepare all my bases first and do like an assembly line thing, you know? So now this guy has to get glued on and he's he has a textured base. I'll put a little bit of, uh, that static grass all around a couple of little clumps here and there to hide the little base that he's on and that's it you know and paint it now uh, a lot of times i like to paint my figures separate so this way i don't paint the texture um so that's it i'll put this guy in a little mounting medium put him on a little cap and paint away and then put him on the base Okay, so once his little base is textured, I mount him on my lid, and I do, I like to do a little ring of guys uh, like this. These are the 172 scale ghosts. They're all, these are pretty much ready. I got to do some work on the bases and do some highlighting and stuff. But these are from Alliance Miniatures, okay? And there you go. There's the little Roman guy, and these guys are also 172 scale and uh yeah so now i get these guys painted i set them up all around and then uh leave some space so that i can paint and set up a couple of these and just you know get them painted we'll see how many guys i'll need the whole box for of gods and mortals but we'll see broken legions is more of a uh fantasy skirmish so i'll need less miniatures for this one okay so we'll see how many I get, can get painted 
up and we can have a game of this real soon. For Of Gods and Mortals, here's a sculpture that I did uh, years ago. This is about, oh God, I want to say nine years old. This is an old sculpture. Uh, and I made this sculpture of Anubis. And I'm going to be sculpting more gods. Uh, because Julie wants to play the Egyptians for Of Gods and Mortals. So that's going to be interesting. Like Roman expeditions into the Egyptian uh, territory. And then, you know, we'll have both gods. You choose a god for the Romans. And maybe Anubis for the Egyptians. We'll see what Julie chooses. And then... We can go to battle. So my idea is to have the gods big and have the humans in 172 scale. So the gods will really, the gods will be gods, <laughs> so to speak. But there will also be miniature conversions and a bunch of miniatures that I have in my collection that will serve as gods, including uh, one or two Age of Sigmar figures that I think would go great. So we'll talk about miniatures how, what miniatures and all that stuff uh, in another video. Okay, and speaking of Romans, I just want to show... This is an older kit that I bought in 172 scale. Uh, this has been with me for a while. And this was a, a siege kit. And uh, here's one of the catapults. And then it brought a scorpion, which is really cool. And I'm going to be painting these up because these will go with my Roman army. These were Roman. And then it has the mobile uh, cover, the mobile shield, okay? And uh, I thought those were really cool. And I, I will be using these in my upcoming games. I have to paint them up. So very cool little kit. Unfortunately, uh, there is one more of these that I got to put together. Unfortunately, it came with a few figures. And then I, I lost those figures a long time ago. But now we have some infantry figures here so 172 scale uh, siege equipment and i think this was from vesta it was not from italy so uh yeah very nice little kit and uh yeah that's it folks well i have to get busy now i i have a lot of work to do today and i'm trying to get my videos batch filmed so i can have enough videos for my patrons and for you guys here my corner crew on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go and start building some Romans. All right. So we'll talk very soon and uh, see you in the next video. Thank you guys uh, for supporting the channel. Thank you to everyone on YouTube. And thank you to my patrons, Richard and Brian. Thank you for your support. All right, folks. Have a good one.